Today I'm going to talk to you about G-protein coupled receptors. G-protein coupled receptors are metabotropic receptors, meaning that they use neurotransmitters as a ligand. Once a neurotransmitter binds, this results in a cascade of intracellular events. In this video, we are going to discuss the G-alpha-I mechanism. The purpose of this mechanism is to inhibit adenoyl cyclase. But before we get into that in detail, let's look at what is in our diagram and what the components are of this G-protein coupled receptor. As you can see here in yellow, this is your receptor protein. Bound to this receptor protein are your three subunits. Your G protein is heterotrimeric. Heterotrimeric means that the G protein has three subunits. Those subunits are here. The green one is the alpha subunit, the purple is the beta subunit, and the blue one is the gamma subunit. And here in red is the effector protein, which is responsible for that change in the cell. Activation of the G-alpha-I mechanism results in inhibition of adenylyl cyclase. In this diagram, adenylyl cyclase is this red protein here. Adenylyl cyclase is a transmembrane protein. The first step in this mechanism is that a neurotransmitter such as epinephrine or norepinephrine is going to bind to your receptor protein. Once this occurs, this is going to result in a conformational change, with particularly norepinephrine is going to bind to an alpha-2 protein receptor. Being a metabotropic receptor, the G protein mechanism must first begin with the binding of the neurotransmitter. In its inactive form, the alpha subunit is bound to GDP. Thus, the next important step in our process is the exchange of GDP to GTP, resulting in the activation of your alpha subunit. Once activated, the alpha subunit will dissociate from the beta and gamma subunits. When it dissociates, the alpha subunit will bind to adenylyl cyclase. The result of this is that adenylyl cyclase is deactivated. And because adenylyl cyclase is deactivated, those other events in the cell will not occur. When active, adenylyl cyclase will convert ATP to CAMP. When activated, adenylyl cyclase will convert ATP to CAMP or cyclic AMP. However, when adenylyl cyclase is deactivated as caused by this mechanism, this will not occur. Because there is no cyclic AMP, cyclic AMP is unable to activate protein kinase A, also known as PKA. Because PKA is not activated, there is no phosphorylation of proteins in the cell. Remember that protein phosphorylation results in different events in the cell. So without the activated PKA, these intracellular events are not going to occur. This is why the G-alpha-I mechanism is inhibitory.